I think my boyfriend is cheating on me with his sister. I honestly thought at first that they just had a really close relationship. They're both Italian, and I had always assumed that was what Italians were like. But then my boyfriend's sister started throwing tons of shade at me. She didn't like her brother dating a woman who wasn't Italian. She refused to speak English around me whatsoever, and I started noticing little things about their hugs and kisses that made me uncomfortable. It only got worse when I looked through his text messages. I know this sounds ridiculous, but listen before you call me insane. I'm writing this because I can't sleep. I've dated him for a year. He's Italian, and I'm an American student in Rome. Looking back, there have been signs, even early on. I took all of this as cultural at first. On one of our first dates, we were talking about our families, and he showed me a picture of his sister and raved about her beauty. She actually is gorgeous. She's a classic Italian beauty and very chic. I was jealous of her then, but I had no idea where this was going to go. I've only been around a handful of times, but she's made it clear that she does not approve of us dating. She's icy, distant, and hostile. She's said in front of me that he should be with an Italian. She speaks several languages, including English. But every time I've tried to talk to her in English, she replies in Italian. You are in Italy. Speak Italian. She once told me my boyfriend will be gone soon. My boyfriend is openly very affectionate with her. He dances with her and whispers in her ear, kisses her cheek and the side of her mouth, and hugs her closely. Every time I've seen them together, he's brought her a nice gift. People here are generally affectionate, but everything combined is off. Once at a family dinner, I was helping his mom with the food when he and his sister went out on the patio. I looked out and she was sitting on his lap. What sister does that? I also have seen her caress his bare chest at the beach. The same time at the beach, he carried her in the water with her legs wrapped around his waist and his hands were practically on her rear. If they did this when they thought I couldn't see, what do they do when they're really alone? He's also gotten into a physical fight with her boyfriend, but I'm not sure what it was over. Earlier tonight, my feelings got a lot worse. He never leaves his phone sitting around, but he did this time. He got a message from her, and I looked over. She said, My heart is yours, my king, and we were made for each other. To clarify, this is a translation from Italian. I left without telling him. He blew up my phone, but I have no idea what to say to him. This has been my best relationship, but this cannot be normal, can it? I'm sick to my stomach and feel mortified thinking about this. There's one detail this original poster left out of her initial post. She explained in a comment that while the sister was sitting in her brother's lap, she was twirling his hair around her finger. That feels like a pretty significant detail to leave out. Not that it matters. Reddit was already so convinced of this relationship, they warned OP to ghost him rather than confront him for fear that he and his sister might do away with OP and hide her body to cover up their relationship. Because apparently we're dealing with a marinara-flavored version of the Lannister family. There is actually one possibility that Reddit hasn't considered. These texts only came from the sister, so it's possible that she's attracted to her brother, but that he doesn't return the feeling. The rest could just be affection, as OP initially thought. But what do you think? Should she ghost him? Is it better to talk to him, or will she risk becoming the next Three-Eyed Raven? Give us your thoughts in the comments below. I thought I was in a relationship for six years, but I was single the whole time. My girlfriend and I have been together for six years. She keeps hinting at wanting to get married and talking about what her wedding will be like someday. So I've decided to take the hint. I bought an engagement ring a week ago, and I'm planning to pop the question sometime soon. Well, over the weekend, she had a work function. This was the first time she's invited me along. I'm not super outgoing, but I was kind of looking forward to meeting all these coworkers she talks about so much. For some reason, every time we talked to someone, she introduced me as her cousin. I thought it was a joke at first, but she kept at it the whole day. When we were driving home, I asked her what that was all about, and she said she didn't want people to have the wrong impression. When I asked what that meant, she said she didn't want to talk about it anymore, and I shouldn't be so upset. She then switched the conversation to her favorite TV show. Why would she introduce me as her cousin? Should I insist on her telling me why she did that before I propose? Update, there was a lot of good feedback to my question, although some of it was fairly mean. I decided to give her a call and be very blunt with her. I asked her if she was cheating. 
and she seemed very confused. When I pressed, she got angry and told me that she's always been faithful to her boyfriend. Now it was my turn to be confused, and I asked who her boyfriend was. Long story short, she's been dating another guy for the past year. She's been hoping he would propose, hence all the wedding talk. Apparently, she's never thought of me as her boyfriend. I misread that badly. She kept alternating between very apologetic, saying, I'm so sorry if I gave you the wrong impression, and how could you have possibly thought we were together? Well, sir, I feel pretty stupid right now. But on the bright side, I'm glad I found out now before proposing. Now that would have been awkward. I just got done signing up for a new Match.com account. This evening, I'm going to return the ring I had bought, hoping for a better day tomorrow. Edit. Because some of you were asking, no, we were not sleeping together. I'm ace and don't really like that. I usually wouldn't include comments on these, but there's one comment by the original poster that makes this whole thing even more of a head-scratcher. We would say, I love you, but looking back now, it was more of a friendly thing. Kind of like, love you guys. We would hang out a lot and share a lot of our feelings. We sometimes would go to a movie together or grab dinner with just the two of us. But oftentimes, we did things together as a group. One time that sticks out is she organized a double date. Looking back now, I realized that I was actually supposed to be on a date with the other girl while she was with her boyfriend. That explains a lot now, like why the other girl kept brushing up against me and stuff, and why she seemed really sullen at the end of the double date. Man, I'm such an idiot. Wait, so OP and this girl were doing things as a group? So why did he not think he was dating the whole group? He may as well have bought rings for all of them. And even if he's ace, did he think that the girl was too? Because there's no other reason you'd think it was normal for your girlfriend to go six years without so much as kissing you. It sounds like OP might just not really understand how friendships work. That's unfortunate, but it's a problem that definitely needs to be solved. If he doesn't get this figured out, he's going to wind up buying a lot of unnecessary engagement rings. Especially if he's so blind that he can actually meet her boyfriend and not realize she's with somebody else. This is just crazy. I feel bad for the guy, but things must be so awkward for his friend now. What would you do if you were in her shoes? Would you laugh it off, or would you start keeping your distance from the guy? Leave a comment and let us know your thoughts on this bizarre situation. If you made it this far in the video, consider liking and subscribing for more videos coming. My ex won't forgive me for winning a stupid bet. My girlfriend broke up with me recently over some drama that blew up with our personal friends. I'd rather not get too into the specifics, but let's just say it was partly my fault. She thought I was cheating on her. I wasn't. She also heard that I had shown people the sheets she bled on after I popped her cherry. That part's true. Anyway, she knows I love her. She also knows I have a pretty troubled history and wouldn't do things like this if I wasn't damaged. I've changed a lot since we got together. I understand I used to treat her horribly, and I really have been trying to change. Like, I used to make fun of her clothes because they were kind of prissy, but I've learned that actually really upset her. So I stopped once she bought some better looking outfits. But I guess the damage was already done because she keeps calling me a terrible person, no matter how much effort I make to change. The real problem, though, is her car. If she won't get back together with me, and she says no literally every time I try to find her and ask, then I at least want her to be able to take care of herself. But after she moved out, I heard that she was having car trouble. I have more money than her, that I got from a bet I won not too long ago, which is what I needed the sheets for, but she doesn't seem to get that. So I figured I could help with the repairs, but I know she'd turn down the money if I offered it directly. Plus, she wouldn't tell me what hotel she was staying at after she moved out of our apartment. Luckily, she went straight to the hotel after the last time we talked, so I told the guy at the desk I was a friend of hers and had the car taken in to get it looked at. Thing is, that was a few days ago, and she still hasn't called to thank me. My stepbrother seems to think I did something wrong, and even my stupid drunk father is taking my ex's side. I can't talk to my friends about it because they just think I'm moping about not being with her anymore. So I turn to you. Am I the jerk? Note that I want to make it clear I'm not asking if I was a jerk for the breakup. I'm also not asking for advice on how to get her back. I'm the only guy who's ever gotten her off, so she pretty much has to come around at some point. I just don't know why getting a poor person's car fixed for them is being treated like some sort of boundary violation. Should I just let her walk everywhere like Elizabeth Bennett? 
Once people put together that OP had won a bet for proving he punched his girlfriend's V-card, they didn't care too much about the issue with the car. If you focus on the car, it's kind of weird that the guy at the desk was cool with letting OP tow a vehicle that wasn't his just because he said he was a friend. But that doesn't matter, since this man does not exist. I mean a couple of things by that. First, the user was banned after suggesting that a woman asking advice on another subreddit about how to please her boyfriend probably just had loose lady parts. But the user was also fictional to begin with. As someone pointed out in the comments on a cross post, this whole scenario is ripped straight out of a romance novel called After We Collided by Anna Todd. A bit of research suggests that this post is a pretty accurate description of what happens in the book, which definitely makes it odd that the characters in that book are shipped so hard by fans, since the comments on this post unanimously agreed that OP was the jerk. Maybe I just don't understand romance novels. But why would you swoon for a character if you'd think he was creepy in real life? Can anyone in the comments answer this? Either way, gotta love the Pride and Prejudice reference in this post about making money off a girl's soiled sheets. Grieving Family says I'm not allowed to have another birthday after my nephew passed away. My four-year-old nephew passed away one year ago because of cancer. It was right on my birthday, and there was no celebration. There was nothing because everyone was devastated. My sister Denise is still grieving. She's in therapy and making some progress, but it's been slow. My family and I try to be as supportive as possible. Birthdays in my family are very important. We throw huge parties. I believe and have been taught that birthdays are important and should be cherished. Yesterday was my birthday. Obviously, I felt bad about the anniversary of my nephew's passing, but I was also a little down about not being able to celebrate like I used to, and my girlfriend knew that. In the morning, I went to Denise's house and stayed by her side until almost lunchtime, when my mother would stay with her. We didn't want to leave her alone, but no one could stay all day. I went to work, and at night, my girlfriend made a surprise at home with a candlelight dinner and a small cake. Something very intimate, and for both of us, since my family was in a bad way. I didn't post on social media, but my girlfriend posted a picture of us holding hands and the dinner she made with a caption reading, Happy Birthday, Love. My mom and Denise both follow her on Instagram. I woke up the next day to hundreds of texts from my mom and Denise, asking if I was celebrating even though it was such a sad day, and saying how heartless I was to celebrate, knowing my sister was in such a bad way. Even though I said it was a surprise, they called me cold, heartless, and insensitive to the pain of others, saying I should have refused to celebrate. I was just glad I celebrated, because it's something important to me, and I didn't even realize when my girlfriend posted this photo on Insta. By the way, in case you were wondering, none of them remembered it was my birthday. Am I the jerk? Not only is OP not the jerk if this is real, but the family are a bit absent-minded. First, how can you raise your daughter to believe that birthdays should be cherished, then send her hundreds of texts criticizing her for celebrating her cherished day? Second, if her birthday is the same day as the anniversary of the nephew's passing, how does anyone in that family forget her birthday ever again? Her birthday should be the easiest to remember out of them all. If OP had thrown a huge kegger at her sister's house, she'd definitely be the jerk here. But as the story's written, she's so obviously not the jerk that it almost feels disingenuous for her to even ask. She didn't even plan to celebrate. It was her partner who bought the cake for a very small celebration. What was she supposed to do at that point? Throw the cake away? Let it dry out overnight and eat it on a less tragic day? No matter how much sympathy you feel for the sister, this argument still doesn't really make sense. Tragedies happen, and grief is all-consuming. But you don't move past it by demanding other people put their lives on hold. If nobody else is allowed to move on, then how are you ever going to move on yourself? Giant woman and tiny boyfriend can't find a place to live comfortably. I've been dating my boyfriend for nearly two years, and we're currently searching for a flat to move into together as our current flats are not suitable for each other long term. The issue is I'm 6'9 and he's 5'4, so obviously this creates some different requirements. We've seen several places, and we cannot agree on anywhere. The places he likes because of his wants never come with what I need. He wants bay windows, an ensuite bathroom, good views, lots of natural light, and so on. I need large enough doorways, 
large enough rooms, high counters in the kitchen, tall ceilings, and various other size-related issues. The struggle of finding a place has led to us both being rather annoyed, and he's been trying to convince me to bend and take a place we saw recently that has all of his wants, but few of my needs. We found a place that has everything I need, but he doesn't like it, and has even complained about the counters being too tall. I told him he could use a step stool if he needed to, but I would get so much back pain bending over to use the counters. I finally got ticked off and told him that my needs outweigh his wants, and he needs to get on board with that or things won't work with us living together. He's upset with me. He thinks I'm marking myself as more important in the relationship. I'm not, but I think physical needs outweigh aesthetic desires, surely. Yes, living somewhere with everything he wants would be nice, but sometimes you have to take what you can get. Is it wrong of me to have said what I said? It seems like the counters are the biggest issue. Some people have questioned why her using a chair and sitting at the counter would be any different from her boyfriend using a step stool, and her implied answer is that her needs are more important. If neither one of them is willing to make compromises, then they might just not be a compatible match. Not because of the height difference, but because they both sound like very selfish people, which means that they're both jerks to varying degrees. Each of them seems concerned with their own needs and demands while writing off what the other one wants completely. She keeps saying he doesn't have any needs, yet the issue with the counters alone suggests this not to be true. But she's right that they won't find a place that perfectly accommodates both of them. If they can't both make a few sacrifices, then it's probably time to see other people before this goes too much farther. What do you think? Is one person entitled to having more of their demands met than the other in this relationship? Is there a way to work things out? Let us know how you'd handle the situation if you were in OP's gigantic shoes. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.